So the scene begins with the camera high in the sky, looking over the lands. You see hills for miles, small little towns dotted here and there along river edges. The camera swoops down near a large wood to the east. And you see men in armored, uh, lots of armored men with horses and wagons going southwards, looks like onto a war. The camera goes swoops way past them, more to the uh, west, and focuses in on a uh, singular man riding a horse. Looks like he's in his mid 50s. And he is riding up on a small town that looks very, very warm. Um, it's, it's on a hillside and all the crops look at their end. The people look worn beyond their years. And this man approaches the town and goes through as he looks around and comes up on his house. And uh, he just got back from selling the last of his repaired swords to a town just, just to the south. And I pass it over to Odin. Yo, I pull the horse's rein, take me to the porch. It's been a weary day. Let's go. And I head to the front of my home. It's, it looks vacant as you left it, it's saddening and inspires many memories of your past it's it's a place that you don't want to be anymore and you try to sell it multiple times and just never got a good price i rein my horse onto his stall holder and i make my way up my creaky steps into my home doors open and I head to my kitchen <clears throat> yeah you uh, when you get in the house smells exactly how you left it you get in your kitchen and it's a sad sight you don't see any food but you did you were able to kick, uh, earn about two gold from selling the last of your uh, equipment and repaired weapons. I could have swore there was a little bit left. Hmm. What else can I sell? I make my way to my room and I put my money into my chest by the bed where I keep my few belongings that I have left. As I open my chest, I see my wife's beloved handkerchief. I pick it up and smell it. My love. And at that moment, as you're smelling it, the camera zooms in on your face and seems to go into your mind and look at the, the, the picture of your wife and as you see her in your in your mind. And the and the image changes, but you don't uh, Oban doesn't see this image change. But then the image becomes another woman, a beautiful woman. And Keeman, you're looking into this woman's face. And she says and she says to you longingly she says Nima you'll always remember me I know you will and at that moment she pulls away from you so fast and so far and the and woods begin to create around you and then all of a sudden you just feel yourself running towards towards that left little bit of light that's in the woods and you feel 
you feel so hungry and thirsty for that love again. And I'll hand that to you. Yeah, running, I, I stop. I stop. I, I lean up against a tree. I look back. I look forward. I start to run again. Just thinking. Who is this woman? I continue running. And you begin running and running and it becomes more feverish and, and all of a sudden you hear behind you what sounds like a horde of something running after you. And you look back and as you turn, the scenery instantly changes to hills. And you see what looks like a horde of men chasing after you, coming from a town that looks like it's burning, uh, destroyed. And uh, all these men, you can hear them screaming something, but you just can't quite make it out. Monster, beast, something. And they're running at you with pickaxes and swords and pole arms. I take a deep, a deep breath. I smell, I smell these men. My eyes turn wide. I look around and I I head in the same direction I was running. And I take off as fast as I can. When you turn the scene changes again into dark, desolate woods. The light of the moon just barely peering through the canopy. And you hear the sounds of those same men behind you being ripped apart and shredded by it sounds like a pack of wolves and when you turn around to look to see what has happened all you see is yourself standing and a mass of dead dismembered men blood everywhere and upon yourself what the fuck covered in blood I I try to wipe it off. It's, it just smears everywhere. I look up for life. I look up to the sky. I'm lost. And and in that moment where you feel lost, you hear that woman's voice again. And for a moment, hearing her, hearing her voice, you just hear you, you know the you know the words mess up. It, it rings in your mind. That ringing becomes louder and louder as she begins to speak your name again. Nima, you will not forget me. And that ringing becomes louder and louder. And that that ringing is just the loudest ringing you've ever heard in your life and you look around and you just see the brightest light behind you out of breath the light is as blinding as the ringing out of breath i just i i i reach i reach for this light i can't i can't open my eyes I start to squint, and it's blinding. Who are, who are you? And at that moment you say that, you reach your hand out and you see what looks like to be a three foot thin, white gleaming blade. And the blade says, fess up, and you pass out and all goes black. And the camera goes back to the house in that desolate town and it starts to zoom in on that house and there's a man pulling up on the horse the horse looks in the same shape as the town as you could only imagine raggedy limping 
and inside open you hear a horse approaching some footsteps and then three knocks at your front door who'd be here I think to myself I did pay my tab the other day at the tavern, didn't I? Hmm. I take my wife's beloved handkerchief that I was smelling and I slip it into my shirt as I then reach back into my chest and pull out one of my fine daggers. Yo! I call to my horse. The horse doesn't answer you, but someone at the front door does. And they say, Oben, it's me, Marcus. I've got a deal. Hello, you there? I heard you. Footsteps to the door. You see my horse out there. You know I'm here. And I open the door. Marcus. Uh, you open the door and you see a man in his early 60s. You know you know Marcus well. Bearded. Uh, he's tried to buy your property often and he's just never given you a good deal. And, uh, he says, Oban, while you were gone, an uh, investor came through and he's offered to buy it practically half the town he says uh, I know I've only ever been able to offer you the most 18 gold for your property but this guy is offering 26 uh, I'm taking the deal myself I'm giving my property up for 40 you interested I stare at him intently We've had this conversation before. I bid you adieu. He says, well, we won't ever be having it again, my friend, because I'm taking the deal and you'll be luck to whatever is to come. I would highly suggest you take it. And he puts his hand out and he, there's an envelope. I take his envelope say Marcus that's good advice you take care of yourself he says look around open there's nothing left here as he's getting on his horse and there's been nothing here for years all I ever loved this year she's gone I slam like, the door behind me. He says, uh, oh, real quick. She, he says, she's gone. And he says, when you see that note, I think you'll understand. Farewell, friend. And he, tr- and he, tr- and he trots off with his head down. As he's speaking, I turn my back and start heading me, slam the door, throw the letter onto my round wooden treetop dining table head into my room and grab my crossbow looks like I'll be hunting again and I walk out of my home head around to the back into the woods looking around for anything that crawls for a quick meal. You search for what seems like an hour, but you find nothing and it just reinforces that there's just nothing left here. And that that letter just beckons even more. As I'm walking back to my desolate home, 
think to myself, why not? Yo, I called on my horse. My horse comes over. I feed him a ration of his. What do you think, boy? You're all I got. Let's go for one last ride. He neighs and he neighs and paws at your at your head with his as he's eating, like he understands. Enjoy. I'm gonna pack up. I go back up my creaky stairs. <clears throat> All right. What is this? I half-heartedly open the letter, put it upright, open. The letter says that this is Rabbis of Medai, and he is offering your land 26 gold pieces, no questions asked, and this is a voucher that you would turn into him upon meeting him in Medai. And there's an address on there. Everything looks very formal. And you've even heard of this guy before giving pretty good deals on some land to some other people. You know Meta is about an 18 mile journey south, just past the thinnest part of the Orklands. my belongings. I walk out to the side of the home where my beloved and our only son are buried. And I kneel down by their grace. I, I pull out my wife's beloved handkerchief. And I pray to Brom. I pray for a fast death so that I may reunite with my wife and son. I call to Yo. Yo, let's go. He quickly comes to your side. I grab one rein and turn the other way and pop my back a few times. I take a big sighing breath in and uh, as I pull up and mount yo we head towards the same town that I sold my swords as you begin your journey <clears throat> leaving this desolate ravished town behind you leaving your love and your child. You begin to head south. The day is nice and not quite ended yet. It's maybe five, six o'clock. The sun is going down in the distance. You begin to smell the fresh air of the forest, replace, replacing the dry old smell of the, of the town of Balmore. 
and you feel like you get about four to five miles and you begin to hear a strange ringing in your ears and you might even wonder if it's your age again and your ears ringing but it doesn't sound like that it sounds like something in the distance something ahead something beckoning you I brace the side of my horse, his neck, and rub, lean into my horse, and look up at his ears. And in a way of us communicating, as we often do, I ask, What's that, yo? When you reach down and do that, you you do feel the tenseness of, of Yo. It feels like it's through his body. And you kind of realize this, like, you actually felt this maybe an hour back, but didn't put it together that the horse probably was hearing this before you did. I brace him and rub. This is one more ride. I tighten my reins. Let's pick it up. And we go into more of a trot. Excuse me. To move into the town. And I think, hmm. It's going to be sunset soon. I, judging from the distance that I've traveled, how much more do I need to to reach the town? So you tr- you keep traveling on, hearing this noise, and as you travel on, the noise slightly begins to shift. I was to the left, and you. When you get to the point where the, the noise begins to sound almost like a 90 degrees to your left, the sun just is now beginning to touch the top of the, uh, the trees off in the distance. And the forest to your left is where the sound is coming from. And you also know that it would be a good eight miles before you reach the town at the edge of the Orkland's. The sound is tripled in, in in volume and it's piercing through your very bone. You even have noticed a couple of animals running across the way, across your path, a couple of birds even flying the opposite direction of this noise. And as you notice that, you see a small pack of wild dogs feverishly running across the path away from you towards the west. The noise, the noise does slightly ring true of something from your past when you would hit the hammer down upon the steel for hours at a time. The ring that was left in your ears just reminded you of it, beckoning. I'm trying to judge, knowing that I have eight miles still to travel to communicate with the townsmen. How far off could this sound and thrashing actually be? When you look over in that direction, it's there's just a hill or two and then the edge of the forest. And when you look that way, you, you almost swear you see the very reality before you warp just for a moment. I start to head in that direction, but up onto the hill. Well, we're gonna find out what this is, yo. We're gonna take the high ground. (laughs) 
and you get to the top of the hill and the noise is just a little bit louder and that hill line is maybe 200 feet away to the, the edge of the hill line to the tree line. I'm listening intently to figure out, is this noise moving? <clears throat> and is this even happening? As you listen in closely, the yo nays and kind of rears up a little bit towards the direction. And you, the noise hasn't moved, it's the same, it's constant, ringing true. And you notice also that you don't hear anything else. No birds, no wildlife, no, no crickets chirping, no locusts. Just silence in the rain. I dismount, yo. Yo? Follow. This is a command that I've often used with yo in teaching him to stay where he is and to follow me at a 200 yard pace. And I start down the hill towards the sound and hike from the hill line to the tree line. You do so, and you arrive at the edge of this forest that looks untouched. The tree branches are low and it's twisted. Looks like the home to wildlife, not man. And almost as it's inviting you, there's a clearing directly in front of you. And that ringing, even louder now, closer. You can feel it in your head. It's almost becoming maddening. You almost want to silence it. But yet it's drawing you. As I walk through this unbattered wood, I look for a big sharp stick that I could use to aid in my footing. Ah, uh, this should do pick up the stick and I break off one piece of it that where it bifurcates <clears throat> I then sharpen the other end with my dagger as I make my way as you continue course, on it seems like to be only maybe 200 more feet into the woods. It gets darker, but your eyes adjust with just little bits of the uh, red light peeking through. Excuse me. And you come upon a scene. The horse pulls back just a little bit, and the wind changes and hits you, and you smell death. And you take a few steps more forward, and in front of you, you see a man naked, face down, and around him, seven dead men ripped apart and shredded, and amongst them, five dead wolves also that look like they've also been ripped apart. The only thing that looks like it might be alive is this man in the middle. <clears throat> and you see him half covered in blood with something strapped to his back. This definitely seems to be the source of the ringing. And when you zoom your eye in on whatever might that might be, you get a warping in reality again, like the ripples off of the hot highway. I take in the scenery and I'm trying to study 
exactly in what manner do these scattered people and animal look to have been killed in? As you examine the bodies, as you're walking around the perimeter, you see that <clears throat> all of the men look like they've been ravaged by the wolves, and some of the wolves have been killed with what looks like to be the swords of the men that are still lying on the ground, dead and mutilated and covered in flies, but untouched by any wildlife. This looks like this probably might have happened a day or two ago by the smell of it. Hmm. What the hell happened here? The horse gives a heavy neigh and a pull and a half rear up. Is he still alive, yo? I look at the man and I'm trying to watch for signs of movement, breath, anything. As you get a little closer and you look at the man, you do see his back rising and lowering slightly. But what more catches your eye now that you have this angle is you see what looks like to be the most beautiful, perfect rapier you've ever seen. Just slightly hanging out of an oversized sheath on the man's back with very strange strapping hanging all about his body. Is this rapier sticking in him or in the sheath? I study it a little more intently. And using my stick, I try to move the end of the sword handle. From the back part of the man. As you approach and you reach your the uh, pole out, you you realize the sound is definitely coming from this weapon that's way too good to be on this man or in this scabbard. And now that you're closer and you look at this man underneath some of the blood and dirt and grime that's on him. You see this man's covered in cryptic, ancient-looking runes and writing, scarred from head to toe. And you nudge the weapon on his back, and the back muscle twitches. All of a sudden, the, the scene changes, and Keeman, you're laying on your stomach, and you open your eyes, and you're in pure whiteness. Nothing but clouded love surrounding you and you feel something nudge you on the back and you hear the words echo through your being Nima wake Nima wake I slowly I slowly turn hoping to see her face hoping to to, to get a glimpse of this beautiful voice. I slowly turn over. As this whiteness slowly starts to fade back in and reality starts to show itself again, I see a silhouette of, of who I think this woman is and I reach I reach out, I reach out for her. I try to shake this, this reality as it's coming back, but this definitely isn't this woman that I, that I've heard. Where am I? And as you do that, uh, Obi, 
you nudge the sword just slightly and you hear this man mutter as he begins to lift and turn his face towards you. You can't help but notice in this moment when you get a profile of this man, it just ever so slightly resembles your son. And he turns towards you. And uh, Dan, you can go ahead and, or sorry, Keeman, you can describe yourself. Continue. What you see is a, uh, a thin, pale young man, long black hair, probably matted with sweat, dirt covering my face. I'm trying to blink away what seems to be bright light, but it's definitely not bright here. As Keeman, as this man is looking back, a chill runs through me. No. I then step on his right shoulder and ask, what have you done here? And when you do at that moment and you step on his shoulder, you look down on his arm. And as you say that, you see something legible on his arm. And it says names, my names. And the one that you can read does in fact say Keenan. And you see some other ones, but they're not in languages you understand. As I'm stepping on his back, taking in the ravage and gore, I tried to remove him from his sword for my safety. And I reached towards the sword to pull it away with my left arm. And I repeat, what have you done here? As I pull the sword. As you pull that sword out, you feel power that you've never felt before. Give me a lore check with a 14 target. I wrote a 14. You suspect by holding this, this is made of the fabled Osmium star metal, only craftable by the main Dahar. This weapon is vibrating in your hand, and when you pull it, the ringing becomes ear piercing. Keep it. This sword is drawn, and when it's drawn, a primal memory of its purpose and what it means to you rings through. But you hear this noise times 10. It's ravishing, it's ear piercing, it's almost crippling. But you feel deep that you've dealt with this many, many times. And you become stronger. You feel underneath your underneath your foot this quickness that you didn't think was possible. And I I immediately grab for the sword. Give me a uh, dex attack. Plus nine. Oh, shit. Fifteen. Oban, you're, you are surprised by this. 
and you are not ready for this, so I need a, a dodge, and your will, yours will be a 18, your target. Six and three, nine, and I rolled a 17. You easily get the sword, Keenan. I grab it back. Does the sound? Is the sound still there? Penetrating as much as ever. You 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 feel the reflex to sheath it. I quickly go to one knee, and I I go to sheath the sword, and I look up at at this at this stranger. Who are you? What happened here? And at that moment, the sword is completely silent. Oban and Keeman, the sound is gone. Keeman, it, it sounds now just like a distant memory. It's it's on your back. It's like a weight, a weight you've been carrying very, very long. Oban, the sound is gone, and you see Yo, even calm. The sheath is a uh, the sheath is a, a low sheath at the thing at the at the lower part of my back. So when I do it, I have to clip a clasp to get it in. Keeman, why Keeman? What did you do to yourself? As I look at his arms and body. Still Demon. lost. Still lost. What does that mean? I lost can't understand. I see. I see the bodies behind him. I see the the blood. I I I I have. I start to take in myself, and I see blood on myself. Why have you? Why would anyone write? Keeman. What does that mean? And what language is the rest of this in? I follow his eyes to my to my body. I, I see I see exactly what he's looking at. And I look up at him just confused. Do I get memory? I I don't know. I don't know what this is. I Drop to one knee. <laughs> Look at me, boy. I do. Where are you from? How did you get here? What do you know? So as, he, as he says that, you have an instinctive pulse kind of thing that goes through your body, and you look right over to your leg, and you smear some blood off of it. And you see the word that says home in a language that you're unfamiliar with, but yet you can read, Keeman. And you see the words under it in a different language that you can't read. And then there's another writing of tattoo over that that says the words Stelmore. Sir, sir, I'm sorry. I don't know what's happening. Please How did you get help yourself me. into this boy. I'm help headed me. To I, town. I, can't, I can't remember. At this at, at about this moment, Keeman, you're talking to him and, and you cleared the hair from your face and you and and you, you, you kind of come to your senses a little bit and, and you realize that you have no memory and all of a sudden you get a little bit of memory but it's like it's like structural memory and you're able to put together what you're actually seeing instead of having a conversation with something um open can you describe yourself here open is older wrinkled sun-dried 
grayish dark hair that looks like it's been maintained by a dull dagger with uneven cuts. Five o'clock shadow wearing light clothing with tattered and dirt and just looking worn open ass tell me boy what is your name I look down at my arm Keeman, I guess. When you say, right when you say that, you hear that echo in your mind, and it and it and it rings, and it says, even though you feel like that's what it is, you 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 hear that echo of that woman in your mind, Keeman, and it says, mm. it echoes away. Oh, what does it say? You cut out. Oh, it, it echoes Nima, Nima, Nima into silence in your mind. I say, Can you rise, I say, boy? I say Keeman uh, a little bit more confidently now. Instead of a question now, it seems more of like a statement. Keeman. Okay. Keeman it is. Can you rise? I put my arm kind of under his arm on the opposite side and tried to assist him up as he was kneeling. And I'm coming straight up. I allow it. I grab. I, I grab. Now the, now the weakness that I felt before is back. And I stand up. And when you do stand and you feel that weakness gone, you also do have that feeling you notice of a satisfaction, of a filling, of a fulfilling. As I help him stand and I look at him thinking, hmm, you remind me of someone I used to know. I look him over real quick to see if he has any life-threatening wounds. When you do look him over like that, you see it does look like he has fresh wounds, but also freshly healed. He's covered in scars. And Can you um, hike? I, I can't help but to reiterate the fact that you, now that he's standing, you also see this man naked. And if you look down at his nakedness, just in that moment, he's standing. Only thing you see on him is this. You help him stand up. Uh, get oh, Keeman. Yeah, you help him stand up, and you realize now that he's naked, covered in blood. And when he stands up, the, the strapping that was on him looks like it's like for someone that's three to four times the size. And it, now the sword is hanging on, on the ground. You both see this. And you also notice, too, that not only is there a gigantic double-handed sword scabbard that this sword is tucked into, there's also a small bag with it leather bag as it hits the ground as the as the sword drags as i move forward a little bit i hike it up i pull it tight and i notice that there's buckling and and i i tighten it a little bit i cinch it up a little bit to get it off the floor what happened here what is this And as you buckle it up, you realize that it, you, you get that memory back, that instinctive memory, and you realize as you buckle it, it keeps buckling and buckling until it tightens all the way back up. And, and, uh, and in this, and this moment too, Oban, you, you are starting to really realize that this man is affected by some kind of memory. And I'm gonna give you another lower wall here with no negative. And your target will be a 14. And I fail. 
you 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 felt like you might have had an instinct about something, but you just can't put it quite together. It's puzzling why this man is seemed to have lost his memory in front of you, naked in the middle of a pile of dead bodies. As I called over Yo, I reach into my saddle, pull out my tattered robe, and I put it around Keenan's shoulders. We've got a hike ahead of us. A good six miles. Kind of nervous get... now. I, I look around and I, I, I start to really evaluate what I'm seeing around me. All this death, all this blood. I'm, uh, I'm starting to look further past it. I'm starting to, I'm starting to get a sense that I can see. I can see paths. I can see ruts in the ground. I can, I can start to sense like direction of what may or may not have happened here. I can see this yo. I can see this yo's hoof prints coming from a certain direction. And I start to follow this around as I see this like massacre in front of me. And I, I look at this man and I, I say. Did, did I do this? And in that moment that you look at him and Obin, you meet eyes back with him. You see the horror in his face and you, as, as war-torn as you are and as comfortable as you are with death, you meet eyes and the redness of the setting sun pierce through, almost like blood covering the canopy over you, all around you. I ask again, call. Who, who are you? Who am I? Today, we'll just say your savior. Tomorrow, we'll see. Are you hungry? We've got I, a hike ahead of us. I I look as in thought, and I I say, uh, no, I'm 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 fine. And at that moment, when you do look around and you feel fine, you also are starting to slowly just get a little bit more of your civility back. And you look down and you realize that you're completely naked, covered in blood. I, I, I search around and, and grab grab things off the ground that, 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 that I can see that might fit me. I place a robe on him. My tattered oh, cloak. I, I look now. I, I finally notice the robe that you've been holding. I grab it from him. I cover myself. I... Please, wait. Walk. Hold, hold one second. Let me... Let me dress. I'm sorry. Take your time. I'm gonna start a fire. Torch. I walk over to the tree and look for some moss and break a branch and start to build a makeshift torch. You easily find all the stuff you need here. Everything's pretty dried. And when you, as you fashion that torch, uh, the redness becomes amber, and the darkness is starting to pull up on the opposite side of the forest. And you also hear an unfamiliar sound. This moment felt like an eternity. You hear a chirp of a bird, maybe two. I mount yo. Are you ready, Keeman? You should get moving. Right, right. Okay. Uh I'll follow you. 
as we make our way, I'm curious. I ask, so where are you from? You don't look like you're from Bellendor or Valmore. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, sir. I, I seem to be not myself. I, I'm at a loss. I, I don't quite remember. I when you say that, you you do remember um, a flashes through your mind came in just a moment ago on your leg, and and the images flash in your mind on your leg, and you hear in your mind, but in different languages, Belrose, Fessa, and then clearly you see the one on your leg says Selmore, home. Have you heard of Selmore? Selmore. Is this a place? Yes. Do you know where it is? The town we're heading to has many maps. Perhaps you'll be able to find the direction you're looking for. As for me, I'm headed to Meti. But first, I've got some investigating to do. When he's um, in that moment, also came in when you heard the words Meti. Uh, something rung true for you there. You can't place it, but it's there, just on the tip of some forgotten memory. And at that moment, you break the wood and you see the path going south. Darkness behind you. Just the last light of the sun going down. They've also got an inn at the town. You look like you can use a rest. Yeah, you see Keeman just kind of lost in thought. Especially after you said Meti, he he looks just confused and and then just a a blank stare as he looks forward in the direction that that we're headed, as if just in confirmation of I, I move with you. That sword of yours, I've wielded many, though I've never seen any metal as fine as that. I grab the hilt, I again just look confused and I say, it feels very special to me. Indeed, a blade like that. It would only be meant for one. And when you said that, when you say that, Oben, you you remember the moment you grabbed that sword. You, you remember how you were compelled to it. You remember the power that you felt in, its, in your hand. You remember how perfectly balanced it was. You remember every detail of it, even though you saw it for a moment. So I ask you, Keeman, are you the one for that sword? Sir, please forgive me. My memory is vague. I, I couldn't even tell you what my name was. Hmm. I'm sorry. I have hmm, some experience fine swords myself I will tell you it feels very dear to me so when my memories do recur I I feel I am the one that wields the sword 
And mm. and as you're saying that, Keeman, you're looking on your body and you're noticing the writing under what you can see is starting to feel more like a memory. You're starting to kind of slightly make out some of the lettering here and there. And you and you just everything else goes silent around you for a moment as you just hear that coming from the sword on your back just as a most comforting sound a sound that you feel like you couldn't live without and when you both look up from that moment of up ahead of you miles ahead what looks like to be your destination the destination of a band or the, the town you just visited you see more smokestacks than you would normally see. The smoke is dark and it begins to fill the sky. <clears throat> is this my tea, sir? What is happening here? And I couldn't hear, I'm sorry, I'm trying not to talk out of character, but you said how far are we from the town now? Uh, miles. Miles? Yeah. Okay. We were eight miles. We've been walking. You, when you look up to the sky and you see the moon reflecting off of the smoke, you, you feel like you might be maybe three miles out. That'd be about as close as you would be to start seeing it. Hmm. seems to be destruction in all directions. If I ask again, is this Can, is this Meti, sir? No, no. I'm headed to Valendor. Meti is about another ten miles south. So we're going to have to pick it up. Again, when he says Meti this time, Keaton, something more rings true and you see a stone. You see it in your hand. But when you look in your hand, it's not there. This is sir, the longest sir, what trail I've taken. What, what, should, what shall I call you? Please. I am Oban. Oban of Valendor. And we are headed to the city that I was raised in. Oban, I have no, I have no memory of Oban. I was trying to reach for a, was trying to reach for another memory there. But nothing rings true. I wonder. Hmm. Is Jameson alright? As I'm looking in Valendor direction. And we're traveling. Am I getting the impression that the town's on fire? Yes, you are. And as you are looking and you can now getting a little closer, you can be to see what does look like the flames of town ablaze on the bottom of the smoke. You see just it breaks in, in the edge of the darkness of what you can see down the path, a cart coming towards you. As Oban's stomach begins to growl, it's been hours since you've eaten. I reach in in my horse saddle and I pull out some dry jerky. One for myself. 
and I toss one back to hold to Kimin. Here, son. Chew on this. You've got to be ravaged. Thank you. Something horrible has happened here. When he hands you that piece of jerky, it, it feels like a token more to you than it does a meal. And you smell it, and the smell is so strong, and it brings back memories of when you used to eat this. And then all of a sudden, your, the strength of your smell, you realize, kind of overcomes you, and you begin to get some memory back of your senses. And you smell fire and smoke. And you smell another horse. And you smell another man and a woman. Female human, male human. And the wind changes and it's gone. We both see we both see this this cart coming up, right? Yes. I keep walking. You continue walking a bit, and now the cart and the people on the cart are you're able to make them out. It's a horse, and it looks like two people riding the cart. And it looks like they're going at a little bit faster pace than what they might have normally be going. They're coming directly towards you on the path. As I am in the lead, riding my steed. I friendly nod towards the passerbyers. As they approach and you begin to nod, they they slow down and pull and whoa. And they look panicked and it's a male and a female. And in this moment, Keenan, you realize this was the smell you smelled a half mile back. And they look distraught. They look tired, and the woman yells out as she kind of leans over the moon, Don't go that way. A beast destroyed the village. They killed all the merc they killed all the mercenaries that protect us. You mustn't go that way. All the hillmen are dead, and then the man says, They're all dead. The fires the town is ablaze and fire, and they kind of continue on past you. And in that moment, when they say Hillman, Dan, or I'm sorry, Keeman, you get a strange memory and you get flashes of images of man's face in your, right in your face. And it looks like their heads are being ripped off and they just, they flash like some weird PSTD type thing. They're hitting you and you feel bumps on you and each bump poof, 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 as you come to is the trotting of the horse as it's going away and you feel that stone in your hand again and then it's gone yeah timidly i i'm as they're as they're explaining this this uh this event i'm i'm slowly just like slowly looking at the ground and i feel the rock in my hand I, I don't know what to make of it. I feel like I feel like I'm involved. I I look up at Oban. And I just put myself between the horse and the uh and the cart. And uh, just try to just try to avoid any contact with these people. They don't seem to wait for any reaction. They seem more concerned about warning you, continuing on as they continue on. Keeman, if what they say is true, I have to ride into town. There's something I must do. There might be beasts, or who knows what other savages. I'm sorry. 
Will we part here? Or will you follow? I, uh... I feel I must see what's happening. I will accompany you if you allow me. You're, I reach in... As of now, you're the... You're the only person I know at the moment. It's all right, son. And when you say that, you again, you get that echo in your mind. That's it. That's it. You will not forget me. And and when when you get that nice, beautiful clarity of. of her voice again, you smell fresh, clear water. It lures you. Just as a sense, you're saying when I hear that voice, it just is very alluring. Well, now, now that you come out of it, you can actually smell water. It's like very strong. Smell, I'm sorry, no, it wasn't. The, the smell is real, though, the water. And even when you like, sniff in on it, your ears perk up and you can actually hear running water. And and in that moment, it's strange, but you and the horse make eye contact and you can't help but it's it's weird. It's like a primal feeling you get like you both have found water. It's like an animal instinct. You feel deep. It's, it's strange to you. Come, follow me. We shouldn't veer off the path. Trust me. Trust me, we need this. Yo. I place my arm hand on Yo's neck, right side. Yo indicates that he wants to follow Keeman. Okay, lad. Lead the way. I guide off the path to this to this this sense that I have. Hoping for some answer for something. And as you do, the scent gets stronger and stronger, and, and you hear the running water. And it makes your mouth salivate, and you even hear yo neigh a little. As you get closer, there's a break in the there's a break in the wood, and moonlight coming through. And you see a small brook of water running off some rocks of fresh water. It smells and sounds delicious. And Oban, you see this off way off in the distance, and you slightly realize that uh, something is something's there, and it's like we're right kind of moment, you know. And your stomach grumbles a little bit too. <clears throat> I loosen my positioning on Yo to allow him to take the lead. He knows the direction. And I look back at Keeman. I'm ahead of you. As Yo and I gallop past you a bit, no. Yo's makes his way right to the river creek. Uh, fresh water, huh, yo? I have to listen to your senses more, Keeman. You've led us to a good path. I take out my two wine skins and I fill them. As I drink the water, it's uh, delicious and refreshing, and, and Yo is down there gulping it up. 
and you can't help but notice that this clearing looks like a perfect spot for camping and you also notice as you do that you look around and you see what looks like two spots where people have camped here before and Keeman they beat you up to the spot and you're walking up and yeah I dive my hands in and I start to drink heavily taking deep breaths as I take in this this fresh this water that I've I just feel like I haven't had in forever. As Keeman and Yo continue to drink, I walk to what looks to be a fresh campsite and I make my way towards the fire pit, or at least where they built the fire to keep warm. And I study the ground. As you as you as you get down and you begin to study the ground and the moonlight's reflecting off all the stuff you're seeing, the camera pans the camera pans out. And looks at the at the fires on the horizon of this town that's burning, and it spins around to the moon, and that, and then the camera follows the moonlight down to the water in front of Keeman. As you clear your face, the the water below you settles, and you begin to see your face in the reflection, and the blood and the dirt. Going, going away as some kind of strange deep cleansing and you begin to get a slight bit more of your memory back when you see your face and you, and you feel comfortable just a little more I start to trace the scars on my face trying to remember I start to wash off all this filth and just dirt I look back at Oban as he's setting up pulling things from from his horse and I start to disrobe I I start to I jump in and I just kind of just wash this filth off me I just don't, I don't know what happened. As I'm setting up a spot for us to rest, Keeman, I think it's best that we do stay here for a bit and then head into town. It is going to be dangerous. But I think if we wait a few hours, there's a chance we might walk out of all this. Yeah, starting to feel a little better now. I'm a little refreshed. I have a sense of, of, of what I look like now. I still don't know this old man that much, but for some reason I kind of trust him. I tell myself this is it's the best I have right now. I have to just move forward. It's the only thing that I can do. And Oban, as um, as he's, you see him kind of like cleaning off and reflecting on himself. It seems, and you're doing whatever you're doing over there. You on the ground, you can't help but notice the sword hilt just poking out how beautiful it is as you look down at your old sword well kept but just not quite right just slightly off balance it's always been there for you but that thing is just absolutely amazing and as you pan up to the man that has it you see him now cleaned off 
now you see all the tattoos covering his naked body, the scarring. Some some of which you can't tell which is tattoo or scarring. And just in the glimmer and, and the light, you can begin to make out some words on his back that are large. They look like there's some language that you might not understand. Give me a uh, language roll at a uh, 14 target. Now, you can't clearly make it all out, but one word you make it, you do slightly make out in the end is death. And you notice how rippling this thin man's muscles are and how strong he actually looks in that moment. And then you look back up and again you see it, death. Demon. These markings. I start looking around. What they I, do to you? Yeah, I start looking around at my body now, really kind of evaluating. I'm pulling my. I'm pulling these pants up. I see all over my legs. Honestly, I I don't know. It's coming back to me, though. Some of the inscriptions are familiar, though some of them look like a type of foreign tongue that I'm just not familiar with. And as you say that and you get closer and you look on him, you also are looking deeper at the tattoos and you're both looking at them in the dim light of the now rising moon. You, you, um, Oban, you're able to read something on its hip, on, above his hip, like just on his lower stomach on the side. And it says, I must endure the blade on the darkest day. You see him, Keeman, it's kind of squinting down, reading this on your side. Tell me, Oban, does any of this make sense to you? And then when he says that, your eyes pan up, and on his ribcage, you see this star-shaped symbol, and you're able to read these words also. Flee the morning star. As you pan up to his eyes. Please, Oban, tell me, does any of this mean anything? Oh, you're muted. Oh, I was wondering what was going on. Yeah, my, sorry my, about I, that. I might, I might have talked over you, bro. I thought, I thought um, you were, I saw you were taking notes. I <laughs> said the words as I looked into back up at him flee the morning star some of the inscriptions on your body as i continue to try to decipher have become more clear though i can't help but think if you're supposed to be dead a sacrifice but no there's a reason why you're still here and in that moment that he that Oban says this Keenan again begins to get flashes of 
Impalements, impalements, swords, burning, drowning, limbs being ripped off of you. A hundred times you see this flashing in your mind. That, that pain flashes through your whole body in one moment. And when you come to, you smell something. You smell a human. Open. Someone is here. Yo, I look over at my horse to sign and decipher if he picks up anything. Uh, Pope, uh, Yo comes over and to your call, but he doesn't seem alarmed by anything. I grab my strap. He I... you a bit, and you notice he does look quite tired. Sorry, good. You know? No, I grab, I grab my sword, and I strap back up. When you grab your sword and you pick it up, the the commotion that just was, and the memory flash, and the smell of the human, and this this new friend in front of you, all knocks, all gets knocked out, and you, again you feel comforted by that sound and, the, and that, that thing on your back and you put it on and the only thing that you notice that seemed off was that bag that's attached to it. I reach, I reach for the bag, I, I open it up, I put my hand inside. And you feel that stone and memories flash in your mind and you see bodies dropping in front of you. And you, and you enter a room and you see a woman and a man in horror as they, as they claw and scratch trying to run from some horror. And, and they're gone. And then you pick some stone up and it's in your hand. And then you pull it out and it's in your hand. I open my hand, I, I look at it. I look back at Oban, I close my hand. Open. Hesitantly, I, because I, I, how can I trust a stranger? I, I open my hand and I say, do you know what this is? That stone. Make a uh, lore check. And your target will be a 14. Roll the 12. When you look at this stone, it's purple, almost translucent. It lures you in the same way that you felt lured in when you first saw that sword on this man's back. You don't know what it is, but Something rings true of it, and, and something magical about it that you can't quite place. You can't quite place it. And whatever it is, it looks valuable. It looks like you could retire on that. I see that distant stare in his eyes, and I just say to him, "This is something, isn't it?" Demon. Be very weary pulling that stone out for now on and carelessly showing it to others. I close my fist tight. I put it back in the bag. For I will tell you, if I had a reason to live and a purpose, to want for things. You might have just been a target. And at that moment that he says target, human, the wind changes and you get a whiff of that human again that smells close. Just to the south. You smell the fire again burning. You can almost smell the people screaming. 
I whisper, Oban, believe me when I tell you this, we're not alone here. Something is close. I know it. This is why we wait. We shall move about an hour before the sun rises as we will let this pass. Trust me, these are safe woods. I can feel it. Though something is brewing. And as I mentioned before, I am heading into danger. And if you choose to follow, you too should be prepared to lose your life. as I am. Now, we should rest. Yo will alert us if anything does close. Agreed, I say louder than normal. Let us rest. Yo? I motion to you. Take over. And I, using my knapsack, kind of tuck myself into it and rest. As you guys settle down and camp for the night, Keeman is still alert of that smell. And the smell, the smell peaks at about 15 minutes in, and then you realize that it's probably someone walking down that path. And that smell passes and it goes away as the fires warm on your hands and face. You guys begin to tire and drift off to sleep. When you wake up in the morning, Keeman, you're alerted immediately by overwhelming sense of smell sounds you hear horses and humans traveling down this path again you're sure of and uh you get up first yeah. and it is about an hour before light it's like your uh inner clock knew exactly when to wake you up the oh, fires, sorry the fires burnt out cindering just a little bit left go ahead sorry yeah open wake As I slowly pull out of my knapsack and start stretching my bones and cracking here and there and popping my knee, I look over at Yo. And I'm studying to see his level of calmness. Poe looks calm. Poe looks hungry as normal. You know, I, I, put my, I put my hand on the ground and I, I kind of, I feel that, that rumble of like, of traffic. And I, I tell you that I, I, I there's more people headed down this path. As you look down and, as you look down and say that, Keenan, you're, put your hand on the ground now you have the light and the horizon coming over you can see a little bit better and give me a tracking check the target is a 14 12 you when you when you look down and you can't help but notice these tracks on the ground which you you notice that Omen was looking at earlier there's something fresh and familiar about them that you can't quite make it out. Sorry, I cut you off there, Oven. You, but you see him, uh, you when, in that moment where you're about to talk, where you can help but notice, like I said, he's 
he looks like he's onto something right in that moment. Keeman, I'll fill you in on my plan as we pack. We must start heading towards town. Please, let's do that. We will stay off the normal riding path as people are still exiting. And we must move in stealthily. I'm headed to the armory. And from there, there's one more building I want to check. But first, I have to see if she's still there. She? What's she? Well, I've sold a few items. Some I knew I'd circle back around to. Though, if this town has been sacked, I must go and see for myself and try to retrieve my items that I sold. We pack up and start heading to town, trying to stay off the used normal road. So as you're packing up and stuff, the light starts to crest and you're starting to get that morning golden light in. Birds and animals and the smells of the, the fresh trees and Keeman, you're you don't really have much to pack but you're going over your stuff and you feel that bag and you hold that rock again you get you get those flashes again and a little bit more of your memory starts coming to you and as you release the grip you're holding that rock so tight you release it and you realize there's something else in that bag Pull it out. There's a small note folded up. I peek it open, make sure he's not looking. I unfold it. You look at it for a moment and the words look strange to you at first. Then they begin to cross and almost seem to move on the page as your eyes adjust. And then you begin to make the words out. Rabbis and Medai return the stone. 4,000 gold. Rabbit. And when you, sorry, when you read that word Medai, something rings true again. Uh, some memory you had. Maybe you've been there. Maybe you've heard this before. Medai. Meti. Meti. Medai. Oban, where is this Meti? You're muted. Meti? That's a little further south from the town that we're headed to. I have some business there. And prior to traveling, my plan was to stop at Valendor and ask around about a certain rabbis and why he's been trying to buy up all the near villages to include mine which is, well, forsaken comes to mind. When you, you, have an, you have an audience with this rabbis? I do. I will accompany you to Mati then. And when, he, and when he does say that, you you realize, open in your old age and you're jumbling these things that Oh yes, the the man that you're looking for is in fact in Met in Meti.
We must keep moving. Please. Lead on I'm over. thirsty. I pull out my wine skin, take another sip of this fresh, savory spring water. And I pass the wine skin down to Keeman. Replenish. We're near. Thank you. Let's move on, but let's be careful. We move to the town now. We've made it. So as you begin to as you begin to travel towards the path, you at the last moment you see a, uh, a wagon and some people walking with the wagon off in your off in the off to the left as they pass you. And you get back on the on the other path. And the sun is crested over the over the uh, forest, and you look up ahead, and the fires that you saw burning don't seem so intense, and, and the smoke looks thin, like the fires have been put out, and it's just the last remnants of cinders are burning. And as you uh, crest and begin to walk up the path, Keeman, you smell once again. Something familiar, though, this time. Human, but familiar. I, um... I've been walking this this path under the under the, the new sun with, uh, you know, unhooded. But as soon as that happens, I... I throw the hood over my head. And I start to... I start to get closer to uh, Yo, just to try to blend in with this horse as we walk in this direction of this familiar scent. And as you continue walking up the path, you're going up a hill, and you walk about 300 more yards. You smell this, and it's more familiar, and it doesn't feel like a good familiar. And you and you can smell the cinders of the town. You can smell the livestock. You feel close. And at that moment, you see two men crest the hill. And you, you blatantly see uh, them holding two pole arms. And you see this also open down at this moment. As they crest the hill, do they are they facing? Can I tell the direction they're facing? Yeah, they're they're walking over there towards you. The These away. men are friendly, Keeman. I do not feel. You guys the same. recognize one. I do not feel the same, Oban. I have a. Uh, I have a different idea of what these men are. As I study these men, I'm placing their social class and looking at their clothing so you travel up the hill about a hundred more yards and then you're able to start getting new details and they vaguely look like guards of some sort and they don't seem to be moving at any particularly faster or slower speeds to you they just seem to be at a casual walk and as as you get closer you do see that each of them is holding a large shield and a, a pole arm in each end with a spearhead on it. You, you vaguely make the colors out of yellow and red. And Keeman, that it smells familiar. You, you smelled these men before. You smelled this place before now. Oh, but I tell you again, I've I don't feel good about this. I know this place. As do I. This is the town I was raised. I've come to love it. I know the back alleys 
like the back of my hand. These two guards that approach. Now I'm thinking, are these guards of Valandor? As you think that and look closely, you do remember that this, these are the colors of the guard of this town. Ah. Uh, the yellow and red, yes. Keenan, these are guards of Valandor. Maybe they'll have some more information as to what has happened here. Walk on my right. So oh, I'm I'm already there. I uh I pull that hood down as far as it can go. I stare oh. at the ground as I walk. You guys you guys continue up the hill and the two guards are within distance that you can see detail. And not only does the smell become familiar, the smell becomes distinct. You've smelled these exact two men before. You have a flash. Um, you have a flash in your mind, Keeman, that goes by of that man that you see, and he was running across the tower wall, looking down at you. And you smell the other one, and you see that man as he ducks into a tower wall, into a room, looks like in fear. As you guys approach, you're now about 500 feet from this minute. They've acknowledged you, and they seem to be kind of walking towards you. I pull out my now half-drinking wine skin. I take another sip. And as we approach the guards, I toss the wine skin to the nearest guard closest to my left side as we're crossing paths. As you slow, Good lords. Yeah, you slow down and you toss them and the guard catches it and, and uh, says thank you. You don't recognize them and they don't recognize you. And, and I say... Guard, and the one guard smells it and takes a drink, passes it, and he takes a drink. And as he takes a drink, you see him nod his head over, and he looks at Keenan, and he gets the he gets a drink back, and they say, "Thank you, sir. What is your business going this way? We're having troubles." It is other, I. He looks over at the other guard. It is I, Oban of Valandor, and I pull my blouse slightly over and endorse my hometown insignia indicating that I am indeed of Valandor. He says, ah, I see. Welcome home, sir. And, and this one, who is this? And they start stepping over to the side of the horse. This is my squire. He has a lot to learn. Yes, sir. I say instinctively. And I bow deep. And I use my thighs to keep yo kind of shadowing and sticking as if he's pulling Keenan to his side to sort of keep a barrier between their investigative eyes and my companion. And they they kind of pick up on that and they move a little more around and they look at Keenan and, and what's what's that there under your cloak on your back? That's that's awfully large. And they're starting to come towards you, Keenan. And you smell fear. And, and, and your senses tighten, your heart begins to pound. 
and you, you can even see the slight movement of them raising their shield up just a bit and their hand grasping the spears just a bit more to a little bit better of a balance point. I whisper to Oban, forgive me, old friend. I pull the sword. I pull the sword and I rush the closest guard. So when you pull that sword, everyone in the area is overwhelmed with this piercing song of the sword. A wave comes out that's just like warps reality, like a heat wave in your eyes. And Oban, you feel this power come through you as you see this sword come out. It's almost like you even see a fictitious light, but it isn't there. And you pull this sword out, Keeman, and this this the sound is piercing. Even though you pulled it out in instinct, you immediately feel like you want to put it back, but you're already stepping forward. You, you hear nothing but this piercing noise as, as it consumes you to the bone. And as you look up and you see these men in fear, they're, they were not ready for your speed. They were not ready for the fear and, and murder in your eye. And now go ahead and make that throw. Strength. Would you roll there? Sorry, I didn't give you a target, a secret target. <laughs> uh, I'm at 16. All right, you uh, you pierce him. Direct hit on the first one in front of you. Go ahead. Yes, I. As I pull the sword out and I feel that just that 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 immense screaming in my head, and I want to just sheath this sword over again. I try to make this as quick as possible, and I find I find an opening. And I just stab at this opening. Using all my momentum as I was rushing forward to just push through this target to move on to the next. You feel the sword go through his sternum and you feel his body go limp. And you, you don't you didn't even realize how strong you were and how fast you were. Oban, you see this man just whisper to you and apologize and burst forward in speed. The guard drops in front of him. The other guard doesn't even have time to react. He, he just starts stumbling back. His posture drops. And, this, and the man drops in front of you, Keeman. And as that sword pulls out of him, the, the frequency changes. And you guys feel it go through your body. And Oban, you just feel the power. And, and Oban, you immediately see how clumsy this man is with this weapon. He's never wielded this weapon. This this weapon doesn't belong to him. He's not worthy of it, just the way he handled it, the way he dishonorably took this life of this guard from your hometown. The body slumps in front of you, Keenan. Dead. Surely you've cut the spine as you as this blade slips out. As I slip it out, I look at the other guard. He's stumbling away in fear. You hear Poe backing up. Yo? Yo. You hear Yo backing up. Okay, okay. Yeah. I, uh... Yo. Takeman. Seeing this lack of respect for authority. <laughs> What have you done? Why have you... As I... Interrupted... By Yo... Standing to his back... Two... Hind legs... I hold on to my steed as he almost 180s and stands with Keeman 
as they both face the guard. Okay, in that moment, Keeman, the you hear the horse rear up and the blood's dripping off, and in that moment the scent of the blood just overwhelms you. And you feel this burning rise inside of you. It's familiar, but strangely new. And for a moment, you feel that you you feel yourself push it back, but then it pushes back against you, and it it feels like it's coming from your chest and almost touching your limbs. And you see this other guard; he stumbles back onto the ground and says, "I know you," and and he drops his shield and and grabs his uh, grabs his spear now with his other hand, and the horse rears back down and lands. Without hesitation, I jump, I leap at this man. This animalistic rage inside me, I leap at this at this innocent guard. And I just I just come down with all my might with this sword. I jump in Keeman's direction. And I try to parry his attack against this guard as I yell no 16 what am I adding that to uh that would be a dex attack or I'm sorry uh yeah we'll do a dex attack I wouldn't be able to okay it would be a parry, but the way it's kind of doing it in my mind, it's like you're throwing your sword in front of you. I'm giving you a little bit of a bonus there. Too. I rolled a 14. Okay, you you lunge out to throw your sword in front of this man, and, and you feel that you easily block this sword. And, and as you're putting pressure just to gently move it, and you feel that skill running through your hand, and it quickly goes through your mind, I got it again, or whatever. The tip of that sword just falls right off and goes right through the sword, and your sword is cut one third down. And that sword pierces the man's shoulder as he screams out in pain. And he takes a swing at you, Keeman, but he's too close to hit you with the uh, tip. He he, he lunges at you as you hit him, and he kind of falls into you because he's trying to hit you, but he's too close and just kind of like bumps you. And you guys kind of both fall over on your sides. And you're laying there now, and you're looking down at the moment. As they both fall, are they near Yo? Yo is behind you and is now from the commotion starting to back up. Not panicked, but in a trained way. And both of them are now on the ground. And I'm standing over them. Yes. I say to the guard, Who is this man that stands before you? I yell, these, these men meant me harm, Oban. I promise you. And uh, as he says that, the man grabs the sword and starts to pull it out. And he says, he was here with the beast. And, it, and the sword just pulls out of his hand and it's just ringing, crushing in your head now, Keenan. You just want to put this thing away because you feel this heat and burning almost raging to your fingertips and just there's something about this sword and the ringing of it and the love of it that's trying to tame your hand and you hear again that woman's voice whisper to you and it echoes i put a knee on the guard's neck i sheath the sword i look around the guard's body to see if he's holding a small weapon like a small dagger something else I can grab to get this ringing out of my head. And I tell him, what beast? And, and as you 
as you sheath that sword, you just overwhelming calm hits you. And you do see he has a, uh, a quite a large dagger, almost nine inches in length on his hip. And he looks at you in fear, and he looks into your eyes, and he's trying to mutter some words, but he's in such fear right now. And he's beginning to tremble, and he's like, da, 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 you, you, uh. he can't even make his words up. I grab for the, I grab the dagger. I grab for the dagger. I I peek it open again, and I say, I promise you, they meant me harm. And I try to kill this man with his own dagger. Uh, yeah, go ahead. No roll. I stick it. I stick it through his through his neck. Avatar. I stick it through his neck, <laughs> and I just look. I look at Oban, and I say, "Forgive me, old friend. I had no other choice." Boy, please help me. Someone should teach you. When wielding a sword like that, there's always another choice. And in, that, and in that moment, Dan, when you stab him and you feel that power and you smell that fresh blood again, you don't feel restricted this time. And that, and that heat just feels so good and, and you just want to release this rage and it's at your fingertips now. And it's, it's, it's almost like it's there if you want it. I put my hand on Keeman's shoulder and I pull him back off of the fresh corpse Keeman's Keeman's body is seems it seems almost like it's shaking and he's breathing heavily and as you put your arm as you put your hand on on my shoulder that breathing starts to subside a little bit but it's this heavy ragged breathing and my head my, my eyes face the ground. I'm looking away from you, but this this like this this heavy, heavy, heavy inhale, heavy exhale. I now Help move me. in front of Keenan and I put both my hands on his shoulders as I try to stare him in the eyes. And I say, boy, there's something I must do. And you must trust me. And in that moment that you say that, a flash goes through your mind open. As you see this man, and you see not the same eyes you saw before. You see rage, you see murder. You smell the blood now that looks like he surely smells. You see some salivation on his mouth. And you now made out the words that was the rest of the tattoo on his back. And it says, I am death. And you see the hilt of that sword on his back. And Keeman, you feel that he just wanting to pour out of you. I think you've been overtaken and maybe that sword is the sense of your madness. I want you to trust me as I too feel that sword calling me and you don't wield it like its own. Allow me to study that blade and I shall tell you, I shall see for myself. Is this blade in fact harming you and causing you to be mad? All this, all this talk, 
it's just like it's just words just ringing in my head and i i feel this rage and i start to i start to build i start to i i i rip away from his from his hands and i just scream ah! help me and i start to just like try to like settle and i'm ripping at this like this 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 alien material that's on my flesh i'm pulling at it and i back away i step over the body i back away from you you see me just just like ripping at this at this material the material rips easily from your body as your strength almost seems to double your your blood boiling you start getting flashes of of murder and death and you realize in this moment that maybe that was you somehow and you smell the fear off this old man now and his talk and his rambling and you keep seeing his eyes dart to your sword the, the cloak rips easily off your body all the clothes ripped off you're standing there naked you feel your skin begin to stretch Demon, you are becoming possessed. I've never seen anything like this. I fear you have been cursed and the things you are carrying are cursed. And as you're saying that, you now see him like writhing in pain and it looks like his eyes have glazed over and it looks like his bones are starting to contort on his body and his, and his, and his body, you can actually see like heat coming off his body and he's beginning to change in front of you. You feel this rage, Keeman, this pain searing through your body. What are you good? None of his words are getting through. I see this man, I see him. I see him looking at the sword. I smell his fear. I can taste his fear. This pain, my body starts to grow overwhelmed with this, with this urge to just, to just feed. And at that moment, uh, you see this, you see you're, you're stunned open, not even almost believing what you're seeing. The sword, the stone, the strange man, your, your path to a better life, your path to death, it all flashes before you. As you look down and you see that guard gurgle his last breath as a spray of blood flashes up. And you see, and the camera, and the camera zooms in, and it, and it speckles, and it, and it zooms in on one speckle of blood that's going up in the air, and you see it open, and it touches the lip, the tongue of Keeman, and that sends him over. <laughs> I want to disarm um, him as I. I'm now going to use my... Well, uh, as, you, as you begin to, you see that, you see in that moment that you've, uh, you've lost Keeman and you reach out, you see his, as he looks up and at you, you see his body still changing before you. Now it's like hair is like bursting through his skin. His mouth is becoming like long and, it, and you see his teeth changing right before your eyes. And as you reach out, to try to disarm something that you know that he can't even use. And in that moment, you start seeing the snaps of of the uh, straps breaking apart <laughs> and pulling, and he's writhing in pain, and he's reached out and screamed. And he can smell the breath, and he can smell just old death on his breath. I quickly and smoothly 
slide in and grab the sword and sheath as it's breaking off of him and falling towards the ground. All right, give me a um, give me a hand uh, uh, dex attack. Uh, your target's a twelve because it's somewhat of easy target, and he's more writhing in fear, and the only thing to change, and he is even moving around yet. I not only grab the sword, but as I go to grab it. I start twisting and catch with my right hand and continue to spin to now move to the rear of this man turning beast and the thoughts of the guard ring so ever true or the words of the guard now ring so ever true he was here he was with the beast and at that moment the camera zooms in to dance or i'm sorry keeman's face the blood, and and the we see his touches my tongue and i'm just <laughs> oh well uh, uh, let me add really quick that moment he pulled the sword out you see this old man move so quickly uh, just the, just that little bit left of the human f- memory you have of whatever you had as it's going away you see him go behind you and all of a sudden you feel that love just screaming now like it's never screamed before we're trying to repress repress this beast but you're you're already there you're already at the, the bomb has exploded but but you feel it it's it's out there This old man has moved behind me. You sent you sent him there, yes. As your as the final form is taking over your body. I'm unsheathing the sword and throwing the sheath to the side and holding the sword between the beast and myself as I focus more on the blade itself than I do the beast. Yeah, when you, as, as you unsheath that sword, you now hear it also, and you see him writhe in pain as his body explodes even faster, and, and hair jumps out of him, and, and a tail now like pops up in front of you, ripping open, you see his back like rippling in front of you, and the sword's out, and you just feel that power. It just feels like you were meant to hold this blade you feel you feel young again you feel you feel empowered i in almost a showboat fashion give the give the sword turning towards you a three-way slash into the air as I feel the true balance of this sword and how I may be able to yield it. I'm feeling that this sword is replenishing my very spirit. And at that moment, and, you see you do that and you're engulfed in, in, the, in the glamor and the power of this sword. And you see this beast now fully changed no longer this man that you saw just a just a semblance of 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 glimmer in the eye and he looks upon you i know that i have the sword and i'm wondering as i'm studying him almost not wanting to attack Kingman, but perhaps now study his movement look for a weakness and I'm also wondering is the stone still affixed to him or has that too fallen yeah so as you 
as you do that and it goes through your mind how based on your thought there that this could be that worthy fight you're looking for you do you look around and you don't see you don't see the stone but you see you do see the these straps still attached to him as now he's fully rage in front of you go ahead Keenan, you take it So, oh, uh, real quick, let me, I guess let me give this to you real quick. Sorry, sorry. The, you see this man in front of you wielding this sword, and you just, you, the, the, the love of this sword that's coming off of it, and the power trying to, like, repel you, but also this man that's holding it uh, repulses you. Like, nothing, like, you're not yourself anymore, but he just, this man should not be having this, it's like, it's like walking in on someone making love with your wife. It's like wielding a sword in front of you, and you remember, and you remember her name, and you remember her whole name, Agathis. Your love, her very spirit in the sword. I lunge at this man, this evil wielder of my love. I swipe at him. When you do, I'm prepared, and I'm dodging as I'm gonna study his weakness. What did you roll there, Dan? Weakness Six, identification. Eight. We'll say that again. And dodge. I'm sorry. You're a little, little low. Sixteen. Okay, sixteen. Okay, when you swing, uh, Dex. Yeah. When you swing, oh, I'm sorry, 17, 17. Yeah, yeah. When you swing, you feel, you feel how fast you are, and you didn't even almost expect it. And Oban, when you see this thing rush at you, you were ready for this thing, but yet you've never seen anything move this fast. And it's this claw is coming at you so fast and with such skill and speed and power. You are not ready. Go ahead and make a uh, your parry roll. My parry roll is based on the sword giving me my youth-like abilities. And what my dodge used to be is Sixteen. Okay, so you're able to you're able to put the sword easily in the way and slice and 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 hit the dodge and you think that it's gonna move his hand away, but it doesn't. It slices right through his arm. Easily. You feel it you feel it crisp off the bone of its arm. And and you get such indulgence from feeling that and it rippling through your body. The song of this sword just changes with every angle that you turn it. And in that moment, you feel a great rip of pain go through your chest. And you feel your body being thrown back. You take uh, nine points of damage. Dan, you take uh, five points of damage. The damage that I received. Oh, quick, real quick, Oban, give me also a dex check. You were not, you were not prepared for that. With a yeah. target of fourteen. That that nine points of damage is that from is that from his claw? Yes, and and you'll take more if you don't make the dex check. Fourteen. And I'm rolling at my youth-like abilities since I'm wielding this sword. Is that correct? Absolutely. Seventeen. Go ahead. Um, I am pushed back three feet, and I almost have to lean forward and slide a bit. Shh, as I then stand and am placed from this push that was painful, yet perfectly into a new 
position. And I instinctively yell, In God! As I try to draw the blade down and sling back up in order to catch his left leg and out. All right. Um, you you begin your maneuver, and uh, out of the side of your eye, you see uh, Yo starting to charge over. And uh, Keeman, you also see the horse starting to charge over as you see uh, Oven going down into this maneuver. Um, but you're 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 seeing this in almost slow motion to you, and 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 his. Even his speed of him being an old man with this sword is kind of like almost intriguing you. You're almost watching it for a moment. I smelled Yo before before I seen him. I try to um, I try to speak. I don't know how that sounds, but I try to speak. I say mine, and I jump again. I lunge at at this at this thief. All right. Um. Oban, go ahead and give me that roll. Uh, that's a, we'll call that a easy target, 12. I rolled a 14. All right. Uh, Dan, or, uh, Keenan, you take five more damage. He slices you across your leg. And then uh, go ahead and make your attack. I'm gonna go with the dex, right? Uh, this will be a strength, sorry. Okay. This will be uh, 8 plus 11 minus 1. 18. Alright, go ahead and um, Oban. He you have lunges, 11 strength? He lunges on you with uh, <laughs> he lunges on you and you feel the weight of this creature his claws just thrust into your shoulders. You take eight points of damage. One uh, claw. And, sorry, what? One, one of his, he's missing an arm, right? No, you just sliced into his arm. Oh, I thought I went through it. Yeah, arm. you felt you felt the blade ringing across his bone. What sound, what sound, damage? what sound do you hear when I, when I tried to talk? Oh, he, he, he heard you just go like, like, almost barking like a wolf okay. but uh go ahead and you can finish that attack sorry you you you've hit him oh me sorry yes Keenan. yeah so i i grab into his arm and i pull i pull him towards trying to jump over him to get in between the threat of yo that i smelt and I just use my hind legs and I just push off of him to try to uh, get into a better position. I feel I feel a threat from a uh, stampeding beast towards me. Right. Give that a, uh, we'll do a dex attack on that one. Fifteen. All right, so that's a plus three, Oban. You can try to, um, if you, you see him, he's trying to like do a cat jump off of your hips with these giant claws. You're just cl clutching onto that sword so hard as his claws are gaped into your shoulders. You, he, he, his front claws come off and he's jumping off of you. So yeah, you're at a negative two, so you're a 16 target. I'm at a 16 target. Both yeah, dog. In me, yep. And I'm rolling for a dodge, you're saying? Yeah. Well, anything you can, I mean, anything you want to do. I mean, if you don't want to, obviously, my bad. I, oh, I'm, I was thinking since both his arms are in my body and he's like gripping me and I'm holding this sword. And it's oh, no, what I'm, yeah, what I was saying is you see him coming off of you and his legs are coming down into you. It looks like he's going to like bring his back legs into you. 
That's what I was saying. I didn't know if you caught that. Did you hear him? Um, I am going to use the sword to try to parry, dodge those back legs coming to me. All right. And I roll. Thirteen. Okay, um, you hit you. You easily slice his legs, and it goes right through his legs again. And Keeman, you feel this burning slicing go through your legs, and you feel a weakness come upon you all of a sudden. But those those claws still go right into you. You, you didn't expect what was going to happen there. You thought maybe you were going to hit his legs and knock them off or cut them, but that weight just crushed crushes you. You take uh, nine damage, and he leaps away from you. And as you land, Keeman, uh, you feel you feel now that burning in your arm and your legs, and uh, you take ten more damage from that slice. Those two slices that run across your uh, legs. They ran across your shins, uh, luckily not hitting any, like, meat or tissue. As I'm parrying and being trampled over, I scream to Yo. Battle, Yo! And this puts my horse into a battle state where my horse would do anything to place itself between me and harm's way. And uh, and Poe begins to run over Keeman. You see the horse running over now, and it and it and it's kind of like circled around in front of him, and kind of turning its back toward you now. Just at that moment, and you're just hearing that that penetrating sound coming off that sword that just wants to put you back to where you were, and you feel you feel the pressure wanting to push you back, but you also feel that rage, and you just want to destroy this person. And that, and that pain just seeps through your body. <laughs> limping, limping now with weak, like I have a, definitely feel this pain, this burning. Yo is behind me, right? Uh, he's in front of you, off to like a bit in the, a uh, bit angled in between you and Obi. But he's yeah. If he has, his, he's turning his ass towards you. <laughs> As he's preparing to buck, or back, what, what do you call that? Sidekick, buck kick, mule kick. Again, I have to silence this sword. Yo. Mule kicks, Akeman. <laughs> and as you're uh, contemplating going for the sword, Keeman, you're you're kind of like entranced for a moment, and you see this horse turn, and you see him starting to get up to his knee. Uh, you see in slow motion out of the corner of your eye the two hoes of, of Yo coming up towards you. And as Yo is mule kicking Keeman I reach to grab his reins in an effort to pull myself in a stand up position sorry is it an instinct to dodge if so it was 12 if I was confused then oh I'm sorry I'm sorry speak up a little low sorry uh, never mind, never mind. He instinctively dodges, and, he, and he's oh, you trying said to... You said you're just going to dodge the kick? Is that what you're saying? Oh, I was wondering if I had the action for a dodge. No, it's been on you the whole time, man. Okay. Yeah. Um, you're, like I said, you were, you're just like... You felt that pain, and you were kind of watching for a moment. You got locked with the sword. Yeah, I, I got locked on the sword, and, and uh, I believe I missed that beast 
that this horse was bucking me. I'm focused solely on the sword. Uh, okay, um, I guess that was my bad then. Yeah, uh, these two hooves nail you right clear in the face, both of them directly on. And um, you take uh, six points of damage, and uh, it just rolls you to your back. You were not expecting this. And uh, in that moment, the horse bucks up. You were reaching for the reins to pull yourself off, but the horse did its buck and kind of pulled away, and it's like running, moving to turn around. And you see, uh, you see this giant, nightmarish um, wolf creature laying on the ground now. And Keeman, you feel that pain just enrages you. Really. <laughs> I want to reach for the dagger on my side as there is a small distance between myself and this beastly creature. And I want to try to throw this dagger into the same shoulder of the arm that I cut earlier. as he's scrambling on the ground. All right, you draw the dagger. Keeman, you see him that's up in the air, and he's about to throw a dagger at you. You just get to your feet at that moment. Yeah, wincing, wincing with pain, I, 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 I hobble up and, and turn to face you. I release the dagger in Keeman's direction. Um, Dex attack, uh, 12 target. Yeah, I rolled a 19. Um, I'm, yeah, that's a beautiful hit. You can narrate that, but as you throw that dagger, a- you feel that pain just rip through your, uh, your chest and your shoulders where he jumped on you. But the dagger does land true. Go ahead. I almost underhandedly frisbee release the dagger, hitting him true right the right in the shoulder blade or the uh, shoulder socket. And the throw has just enough speed and force that it pushes him back and slides him as this dagger impales and makes its way all the way to the hilt or the uh, yeah that in, uh, Keeman, yeah, that in fact did happen Keeman you feel that blade buried deep into your shoulder You take seven damage from that. You feel it cut muscle and tendons, and you feel that arm just go a little bit weaker, and as you're completely surprised by this. Yeah, it pushes me back. Unable to use that limb, I I hobble up on three three legs, and I just go after you. You just see me try with everything that I have, everything left it looks like as I hop towards you and try to try to try to finish this and I just open my jaws and I try to just I try to just end you (laughs) seeing your clumsy movement as your left thigh has already been slashed and your right calf has been cut true. I roll for a parry. Oh my God. Six. Ten. Dodge. 
19. What'd you get there, Keenan? 10. Total? Total. All right, what do you get, Oban? Well, I rolled a 10, plus my modifier, I mean, off of a dex, would put me at 19. Yep, he jumps at you with such rage, and you easily parry to the side. And um, when you par- when you parry to the side, you, you, you cut him easily with the sword. The sword just goes through things like butter you're seeing. And uh, Keeman, you take uh, four damage from that. But as you cut through, he does grab you with his like slightly cut arm, and he and he grabs across you there as he was trying to come in and bite you. And, but you move to the side just enough and hit him. Like I said, you keep expecting the sword to do something, but it just it's like it's like swinging a hot knife through butter, and you but you think you're swinging a machete into a branch. So that it keeps throwing your weight off. So, anyways, uh, yeah, he he has you in his arm, and you just swung through. And he missed his jaw, and you and you hear it, man. It's like the, just clamps right by your head. Surely, if that would have hit, it would have ended it for you. Now recognizing how swift and fine this blade is, feeling the claws squeeze in my arm. The strength. This blade. I twist in that direction, thinking maybe the blade will slice all the way through this time. And I'm using motion and the blade to remove his arm and the grip that it has on me. That last attempt that as I, as I, as I tried to, as I tried to finish this off at that last attempt, I, the momentum of me, I just, I bump into you and I roll to the floor and you see this weak, weak beast, almost whimper and look like he can barely move. He lays at your feet. This uh, go ahead and, uh, real quick, go ahead and roll that attack. Cooper. That dodge attack, I'm sorry. As that was happening. Three, six, nine. I mean, <clears throat> nine plus nine, 18. All right. Um, you do that, and as you hit the ground, Keeman, um, you also see your arm fall to the ground next to you. And uh, you you turn open, and you see that you see what you've done, uh, and you take uh, twelve points of damage. And uh, Oban, also in this moment, you see this creature squirting blood out of its arm and shit, and, and you feel the pain running through your body. You've also taken uh, two more points of bleeding damage. I'm now looking at this poor creature as it snarls and then whimpers. And to me, it's all (laughs) as the beast is almost finished and I'm holding the sword now confident that I could strike true I see the glimmer and pearl like shine in the eyes of the beast and I say Keeman is there any part of you in there left before I release you as you say as you say my name you slowly look into those eyes beastly they start to transform and you slowly start to see this form wither and it uh it takes some time but it withers away 
back into this human frail body and you watch as I take a couple breaths and then you can't hear those breaths and then you don't see that chest rise again and I lay there still and as you're watching and as you're watching this uh, open also you feel your you, you see this and dramatic change and this creature seemingly dying before you and what you've just done and the power running through you and the sound of this sword just echoing through you. You look down and you just see the blood pouring forth from you. You've taken six more damage of bleeding. Watching this beast give up its soul and breathe no more, I look down towards the sheath at the blade. I drop to my knees as I'm in pain and bleeding and I crawl over to the sheath to pick it up and put the sword and back away I as you as you as you as you put that sheath and you just hear that beautiful sound of it and, it, and that sound goes away and and then as you put it away, it's like a, it's, it's that same light you saw and it shines before your eyes and the scene changes to all pure whiteness. And uh, Keeman, you are laying in this white stuff again, just beautiful light, cloudiness. And ahead of you, you see a very small dark figure coming at you and it's growing and it's growing. And you hear the name, Mimasis, finally. We can be together. And, and you know this to be at the office, your one true love, the creator of this sword, putting her life into the sword and cursing you to eternity. I take that deep breath and I embrace it. And as she comes closer to you, the sound gets louder and louder and louder. Her song, all the memories flooding back into you. And you just hear, shh, and it goes to blackness. And then the camera goes back to the forest high above. And it starts to zoom back down on Oban, kneeled above your body. Yo. My horse comes over. I reach into my sack, pull out some of my rags, and I start to dress my wounds. Your horse comes uh, over and 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 uh, actually nudges you and kneels kneels next to you. I. Mount Yo. But before I do this, I first look back at Keenan's resting body. And I can't help but heartily stare and look for the gem. that was attached to this beast. You do, you, you jump, you jump back down off the horse and when you hit the ground, just blood spurts from you and it fills your lungs and you spit up some blood and you pick up the stone that was in his back and there's that note. 
to uh, Ravis and the, and, the, and the promise of 4,000 gold for it. And you look at this note and a couple of drops of blood spill on it. And the horse's head comes over and the camera pulls away. You face black. <laughs>